Well, thank you, gentlemen. Uh, unusual uh, speech from Don Teddy in my court, uh, so Segway racing is on. Um, if we can just start, to, uh, if I may say, her, because we've been at this journey for a long, long time, you and I. Uh, and the last time I asked you in front of the public, how are we doing? He uh, very honestly said not very well, uh, which was one of those marvellous moments that he told the, the truth. Uh, but set up for me, just for the audience here, the connection, the opportunity to connect motorsport with uh, mainstream automotive, because I know that, that our friends at Dale and Mass have done it so well, but I'd like to see your vision uh, with all that uh, experience you've got. So, uh, the connection of motorsport and mainstream auto. The establishment is nervous. And I think there's a lot of nervous people in this room today. I think there's a lot of uncertainty. And beyond the economy, the political situation is driven by energy and environment. And it's interesting to see the impact of energy and environment on the establishment versus the, the new companies, the startups. And one thing for sure, there's a hell of a lot of confusion about everything today. PHEV, EV, HEV, PHEV, RWV. It's confusing enough within the uh, factors we're working on them. Think about the consumers are going to buy them. So what I think we're all looking for is clarity. Ergodistia means the idea that all things are possible. And to achieve clarity, you need stability. And you, you need to see things that work. So what are some examples of this energy and environmental revolution that are working. Obviously in Detroit, the establishment is not uh, exactly uh, flourishing today. And yet the mayor says a startup company called Tesla, a Tesla Roadster will be the pace car for the event here this weekend. Interesting. So what does that mean for, for a lot of people in the audience? I don't particularly like to talk about it because I don't know a lot about it, but there's an example today in racing that is very telling. Energy and environment are changing the policies, are changing the rules, are changing the game. And as I said, the establishment and the startups, everyone's reacting differently to these. In Formula One this year, they changed the game, they changed the car. What happened to the establishment? A startup company, basically, a you know, a clean sheet of paper in a way, Russ Braun, has dominated the first two races. So when the regulations changed, what was the opportunity for the startup, the new company? And I would use that analogy to the same thing for everyone in the audience today with the OEMs. It is a time of opportunity, we just need to see the clarity of it. And I think that's where the motorsports today, beyond just a technical evolution, the, all the great things racing does, all the great things SEMA does, we need to be useful in educating, communicating, clarifying all the changes that are happening. And this one coming into the American Law Series with the, uh, the Michelin Green X Challenge is taking, it's a great example of how that story will grow now. The consumers will see the benefits of renewable fuels and obviously the electrification of the automobiles. So I am optimistic, Chris, and I appreciate the opportunity to be here. Everything is possible, Scott. When we met, uh, whenever it was, <laughs> a long time ago, and we mentioned energy efficiency, it's interesting. Everything is possible because uh, I know the conversations we've had in recent past, the, if you've done that, in America it's easier to say this than in, in Europe. The green kind of sponsors that have come together have actually become almost the main steady right now in some of the activities and they are these are good solid people gaining real value and your series is certainly you know, right at the forefront of that. Tell us a little bit about the journey and how whether it's doom and boom or doom and gloom but doom and boom is the opportunity here. Well a little bit about the journey. Uh, I, I have to give you credit Chris and I'm not just uh, saying that you know for the moment because it, I think it was at a SEMA show five, six years ago maybe, when the whole concept of energy efficient motorsport was brought to my attention. And, uh, you know, with great candor, we weren't thinking that way at that time. And if it wasn't long after that, though, that those seeds were planted more firmly. Uh, in our case, uh, 
uh, Herb Fischel has played a significant role. Uh, ironically, it was the Department of Energy and the Environmental Protection Agency contacting SAE International with the idea that perhaps motorsports could help them communicate some of their initiatives regarding alternative fuels, fuel efficiency, emission controls, and really take racing back to its original intent back when Henry Ford and uh, Louis Chevrolet were competing and demonstrating the fundamentals, literally the fundamentals of an automobile, uh, and use that same system of educating and evolving technology, but in a modern day form. So to hit the fast forward button, um, we have prided ourselves in taking a leadership role in this area with those governmental agencies, with a lot of help from individuals, many of whom are here today. Uh, I, I think we've demonstrated that you can be much more environmentally responsible with motorsports and frankly not sacrifice anything. Um, we have three alternative fuels that are available to all of our competitors. You have to use one of those three. An E10 gasoline, an E85 ethanol, which in our case is a second generation ethanol. It's a cellulosic product. Um, ours is made from wood waste, so it overcomes that very common belief that uh, you know, disruption of food chain and commodity pricing, etc. Uh, and then, of course, clean diesel is the third option. So you have cars competing at a world-class level that are doing it in a, a relatively environmentally friendly way. Um, I say relatively because, you know, let's be blunt, these are race cars. Uh, and not sacrificing anything. They don't sacrifice performance, reliability, none of the above. So it is a, a tremendous time right now for all of us in this room because it's a paradigm shift. Uh, green has become omnipresent, whether it's the toxic cleaning products underneath your sink at home that now are miraculously environmentally friendly, uh, or every aspect of the automobile. You can't pick up a newspaper, turn on the television without seeing urgent demand for new technology. Uh, you know, a mandate from the heads of state in the United States and around the world that, you know, this is our Manhattan Project opportunity for sustainable automotive independent transportation. I think racing can play a pivotal role in a solution Again, we uh, were pleased with a leadership role. I don't think it's a question of if, I think it's a question of when. All others will be in a similar position, whether by force or by elected option. Yeah.